Hi, take two for this video of trying to explain vertical circles. I've checked the microphone works this time. Okay, so we've had horizontal circles where the height of the particle didn't change as it went round the circle because the circle was in the horizontal plane. But now the circle is in the vertical plane. Okay, so its height is changing. It's going from low to high. And obviously then it's going to have more kinetic energy at the bottom and be going faster and then be trading kinetic energy to gravitational potential as it goes up and therefore it'll slow down um, and possibly have enough velocity to get over the top and complete the loop or maybe not it depends how much energy you've got initially okay but remember the total energy of the system doesn't change so the energy type can change but you're just transferring the same number of joules between kinetic and gpe Okay, so in my diagram here, some of these bits we've had before. So if this is a string or like a metal rod, a plastic rod, whatever, there is tension pulling the particle towards the centre of the circle, which gives us our acceleration and our circular path. Okay, we've always had that. We've got our tangential speed, V. But then we've got some new bits. Okay, now because we're working in the vertical direction, weight now matters whereas before weight was acting down in the circles horizontal they were independent of each other they're not independent of each other anymore we're going to have to take into account the weight of the particle as it's traveling around the circle so weight acts vertically downwards now we are working in what's called the radial direction here from the center of the circle outwards and so um, like when we have angles on an inclined plane we just look at the mg cos theta uh, component of the weight so it's not the full weight that matters it's just mg cos theta and that's acting downwards in the bottom half of the circle tension's acting up and mg cos theta is acting down when you get into the top half of the circle tension will be acting down and so will the weight component but don't panic um, the nature of a cos curve will take care of that we'll get into that a bit later on uh, because the height is changing Okay, that's going to have an impact on our GPE. And so we also have to uh, measure the height change. So we always measure the angle to the downward vertical. So theta goes in there. If we've got the length of the string as L, it's the same as the radius, isn't it? So L is little r. So the short side of this triangle would be L cos theta. And the height change, if it goes from where it is now to the bottom of the circle there, the height change, and this is a standard expression, is L, the total length of the string, minus L cos theta. You'll see a lot of that okay, when you're measuring height change from the bottom of the circle to any other point of the circle. Worth pointing out, when you're at the very, very top, your height change is 2L. So when you're working out the gravitational potential energy, MGH, it's MG and then 2L. All right. Now, whereas before we had the equation, when we had a string and we, we had F equals MV squared over R, and F was T sine theta when we had horizontal circles. So F is the force towards the center, so that's in this case would be the tension in the string. But acting in the same line and in the opposite direction is mg cos theta. So we have m t minus mg cos theta equals mv squared over r, and r is l, I suppose, isn't it? Because it's the same thing, it's the same length of the string. Okay. Now this formula for working out the tension in the string works no matter where you are in the circle so it even works in the top half because what happens when you go past the horizontal here and theta becomes more than 90 cos theta goes negative and this goes to a plus so that actually um, swaps, swaps the direction for us all right now uh, quite important then a bit of notes if you want your particle to make a full circular loop there's one condition that's always got to be satisfied, and that is you've got to have enough energy. So the particle's got to have enough energy to go all the way to the top of the circle, so the GPE is 2MGL. 
And ideally, it'll have some leftover kinetic energy. You don't want to come to a halt at the top because if it's if it's on a string, it'll just drop. Okay, so but that's an absolute minimum. You've got to have enough energy to to climb uh, 2L in height. So mg 2L. Now, an extra condition if it's a string is that there has always got to be tension in the string. Because if the string doesn't have any tension and the string goes loose, what that means is the particle has fallen out of the circle and is just kind of dropping freely, not following a circular path. So the circle is only maintained if there's tension in the string. So what you find happens in these questions is that you have enough energy to get to the top of the circle and the particle is still moving, but it may not be moving quick enough to have any tension in the string and that would mean that you're not following a circular path anymore so what we say is if t equals zero or if t is negative the particle drops out of the circle but that is only for a string okay if it's a rod you haven't got to worry about the tension because a rod is able to push and pull whereas a bit of string is only able to pull okay so if the object is on a string, when theta is 180, i.e. when you're at the top of the circle, because you've done half a turn, you need tension and velocity, speed. If you're on a rod, as long as you've got enough uh, energy to get up there, you're fine. Okay, so rods are easier to work with than strings are generally. Okay, because you haven't got to worry about the tension when it's a rod. The other type of problem you might see then is more like a roller coaster so it's an object on a track or it's an object rolling around the inside of a tube okay like a centrifuge imagine sort of um the fairground ride where when it gets up to speed you get stuck to the sides so like that you're not actually tied to the center of the circle but there's a contact force pushing you inwards you've still got mg cos theta is your weight component acting the other way okay you still got, now it was L minus L cos theta, and this time it's just R minus R cos theta is your change of height. That's how you measure that little red arrow there. And we've still got this formula of R minus mg cos theta is equal to mv squared over R. Okay. And again, when you get past 90 degrees, cos theta goes negative. This negative goes positive, and the same equation works whether you're in the bottom half of the circle or the top half. Same rules, though, as with a string. If you're on a track and R is zero, that means you're no longer on the track. Okay, And if you're no longer on the track, you're free-falling. You're not actually following a circular loop. Okay, So if at any point you prove that R is zero in this case, you've lost your circle and you're just falling. Okay, like a, a projectile, like a rock. So if we have a look at two little examples then. So here's um, an easy one because we're starting at the bottom. The only form of energy this particle has got is the kinetic energy from giving it a shove and, and giving it an initial velocity of 5 meters per second. Okay, so it's a 2 kilogram mass. It's on a rod, so we're not worrying about tension in this case. It's a simple calculation of does it have enough energy. So the kinetic energy it has initially is a half mv squared. And a half of m is 1, so that just becomes 1 times 5 squared. So it's got 25 joules of energy. To complete a loop, it's got to get all the way to the top up here. So mgh, and that's going to be mg times 1.6, because it's double the radius. So... The GPE needed is the mass, 2 times G times 1.6. So you need 31.36 joules to get to the top of the circle. And we don't have enough. We've only got 25. So no, this particle is going to stop part of the way up. And you can calculate it. It's just a bit of uh, trigonometry to calculate how far around it gets. The second part says we'll calculate the minimum initial speed to complete a loop. So we've already calculated that you need a minimum of 31.36 joules. Okay, And if we have 31.36, we'll make it and we'll be stationary at the top. So let's work with that. 
So the kinetic energy, so a half mv squared, needs to be 31.36 minimum. Again, a half of m is 1. So v squared equals 31.36. And if you square root, you get 5.6. So if I give it an initial kick and get it up to 5.6 meters per second, I will have enough energy to complete the loop because I'll be able to uh, raise the particle by the 1.6 meters to get to the top. Okay. Now, that's fine with a rod. Obviously, if this was attached to a string and this particle comes to a, 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 an absolute stop at the top, it's just going to fall straight down, isn't it? Okay, so the, there you can see the difference between a rod and a string, whereas the rod will actually support the weight of the particle and just hold it there, and it will just rest there until somebody gives it a nudge one way or the other to make it fall back down. The second question I've got is a bit trickier. So I'll uncover just the first part. So a similar setup, we've got a 3 kilogram mass and we're going to give it a, a nudge to begin with of 7.5 metres per second on a 1.2 metre uh, radius. Okay, it's a string. Um, and we'll calculate the kinetic energy it has initially then. So that's a half of m, so a half times 3 times 7.5 squared. It's got 84.375 joules of energy. Another question says, well, calculate the speed and the tension when it gets to 70 degrees. So 70 degrees would be roughly there. Okay, so there's our particle. Our angle is 70 degrees, so any thetas we have are going to be 70 degrees. And then if we mark in what's going on then, so we know we've got um, a tension in the string that's acting towards the center. So that's T. And we've got an mg cos theta acting outwards. So we've got T acting inwards. And we've got mg cos theta acting outwards. Okay. And mg cos theta, you can work that out because it's just um, 3 times 9.8 times cos 70. So I could put that in now. That's 10.055. I'll need that later. Okay. We also need to calculate the change in height because the more height we've gained, the less kinetic energy we've got left over. And our change of height, so this is an expression you had in your notes a few minutes ago, is going to be 1.2 minus, so remember this is based on a triangle here, minus 1.2 cos 70. That is a standard expression for height change okay so 1.2 minus 1.2 cos 70 right so how do we work out its speed when it's risen this distance well it's kinetic energy and it's G, uh, gp's gravitational potential are equal to 84.375 so the kinetic energy which is half mv squared so 1.5 v squared plus mgh, now that's 3 times 9.8 times our whole little expression there of 1.2 minus 1.2 cos 70 is equal to the total energy that the particle's got, 84.375. Okay. If you calculate the mgh, because that's all numbers, Okay, and take it away from the 84.375, you should end up with 1.5 v squared is equal to 61.161. And then if you divide by 1.5 and you square root it, you get a speed of 6.39 meters per second. <coughs> and we need the speed to calculate the tension. So that's why I had to do the speed first <coughs> by doing energy. Right, okay, now we're going to work out the tension. So we're going to use F equals mv squared over R, but because of weight, it's a bit more complicated. So it's the force pulling us towards the centre, T, minus mg cos theta, which is the 10.055, is equal to mv squared over R. So 3 times 6.39 squared 
over r, which is 1.2. And then if you multiply and, and sort this fraction out, if you bring the minus 10.055 over, okay, pause the video if you want to check this, you should get a tension of 112.14 newtons. Now, if you round it a little bit, it might come out slightly differently to mine. I can't remember if I left the numbers on the calculator or not now because this is my third go at this lesson and I can't remember. Okay, so at this point, it's got enough velocity. There is tension in the string, so it is still following a circular path. And this is all the proof I need is that the tension is positive. Now, the next part of the question says to calculate the velocity and tension at the top of the loop. Now, I'm just going to make a note that the energy, the total energy this particle has before I scroll up is 84.375. Before I lose that. Okay, so now our particle is up here. We started at the bottom. There's the center. Okay, so our angle is 180 degrees. And if you set your angle to 180, the same formulas all still work. Uh, we've lost some energy when we've uh, gone from the bottom of the loop to the top of the loop. Okay, so if we work out, um, so we've got 84.375 is equal to 3 times 9.8 times 2.4. That's the gravitational potential energy we've used up against the top circle. And then whatever's left is our 1.5 v squared, half mv squared. Okay. If you work that through, so take off the, uh, the gravitational potential that we've used up and work out your velocity of what's left, you've got a velocity of 3.03 meters per second. Okay. There's about 13 or well, nearly 14 joules of kinetic energy, which gives us a speed of 3.03. So, with energy, we've got enough to get up there. But is there tension in the string? If there's tension in the string, we're still following a circular path. If the tension is zero or worse, negative, we've fallen out of a circular path and this object is now doing whatever it wants because the string has gone loose. So we go back to the same formula we used up here. T minus mg cos theta equals mv squared over r. Now remember I said, because cos goes negative after 90 degrees, the same formula works even when you're at the top. So T minus mg cos theta equals mv squared over r. That's the formula I'm using. So T, which we don't know, okay, but we assume that T acts downwards towards the centre of the circle, because otherwise it's not following a circle. So mg is, sorry, I've got to, uh, take that equals off as a minus mg is 3 times 9.8 all right so that's 29.4 cos 180 now if you put that into a calculator cos of 180 is minus 1 and so on the left hand side what you've really got is t plus 29.4 in other words the weight and the tension are acting in the same direction they're both acting down but the formula automatically takes care of it for us you don't manually have to change that to a plus the fact that cos 180 is negative will do it for us equals uh, mv squared over r so 3 times 3.03 squared all over 1.2 which is the radius if you work out this fraction and you take away the 29.4 what happens is that T comes out as minus 6.44. In other words, T is not acting downwards like it should. If anything, T is pushing up. Now, if this was on a wooden rod, that's fine, because a wooden rod can push upwards, but a bit of string cannot String doesn't have like uh, the ability to push an object. You try and push something with a bit of string, the bit of string just folds, doesn't it, and bends. Okay. So what we've proved here, and it and it didn't happen at the top. It actually happens some part way round. You can calculate. It's quite complicated. We'll, we will do that. At some point round here, t went to zero, and when that happened, 
the particle stopped following a circular path and would actually fall back down and it, and it would go back to a circle again. You can easily prove it. If you tie an object to a bit of string and swing it slowly enough, when it gets to a certain sort of height, it'll just do what it wants and the string goes loose. And that's what we've proved here. So if this was a rod, if it was on a rod, we've got a circular path. If it's on a string, we're not in a circular path and the proof is that T has gone negative.